Well, hello, everybody. It's mid-April, late April, mid-late April. We're kind of there, tornado season. It's been a little slower across the plains, a little bit more busy to the east, especially in the Midwest. But that's about to change because the plains are about to get really busy really fast. Let's take a look. So as we take a look at where we are right now, you see this trough of low pressure right here, big negative height anomalies up here in the northern U.S., southern Canada. This is an area where we'll be watching uh, to watch what this pattern does from here. Most every model shows this, where this trough moves off, goodbye, big ridge builds up here in the western U.S., big ridge. There's going to be a nice warmth building up here into the weekend, early part of the week. This is going to be the best weekend to get out and do stuff if you're a storm chaser for the rest of spring, because if you're a storm chaser and you want to chase a lot, this is the last spring that's going to, or last weekend that's definitely going to be free, I think. So, and I'm going to take advantage, that's for sure. So this ridge builds up over the middle of the country into the middle of the week, but you see this trough is coming in right here to the west. This trough is the big weather maker for next week. Uh, big southwest flow, big trough coming in, going to last all weekend long, according to some models. We'll look at an operational one here in a second, but you see, as you just keep going forward, uh, some positive height anomalies here. I'm not worried about that because this right here, heading into the early part of May, this is classic traditional severe weather setup. Big western trough, eastern ridge. Folks, that's big time. And it's just very consistent across models, across model suites. Let's take a look at the euro, actually. And I'll show you what I mean. It is just on everything. Every single model is showing largely the same thing. Uh, here you go. Trough moving out, ridge moving in. Then you have that first set of troughing moving in, starting into late week, into the weekend. You have more troughing building in. Look at that southwesterly flow all the way through early May, and it just continues. This is going to be a setup that's going to yield tornadoes over the middle of the country. Couldn't tell you what days, couldn't tell you where. I'm just telling you that this pattern right here, eastern ridge, western trough, that's tornadoes this time of year. It doesn't matter. I'm, I, you can take that to the bank. There's going to be tornadoes over the middle of the country, late April and early May. Absolutely. Not even, uh, I'm not even questioning that. Uh, if you want to really uh, dive in, let's take a look really, let's go back here. The GFS, GEFS can actually go out to 840 hours. So, and we're about to delve into the weeklies kind of longer range stuff. So let's just go ahead and do that. Uh, you can see it does that. You have this troughing. And now we're beyond where it has been. And you can see there's still a pretty strong signal for some negative height anomalies out there off the West Coast to the West. Some positive height anomalies. So as you're going into mid-May, there may be a slight break. But I'm telling you, this is just like that that southwesterly flow almost through the entire month of May and maybe some ridging building in toward the last part of the month. But I'm not even sure about that because this looks pretty good still. So I think the American models are looking... Uh, pretty potent. If you look at the euro now, let's take a look at the euro. These, this is the weekly model. This runs out to 924 hours. It's a great climatological tool. Again, though, all the ca caveats aside, things. This is broad picture stuff. I can't tell you where. I can't tell you what days. I can. We can just look at these by the week. So, looking at this into next week, uh, look at through next Sunday. You see, it has those negative height anomalies. Moving into that next week in May, again, the average of every day. Southwesterly flow over the plains. You start seeing that maybe break down mid month a little bit, but I, I, there's still negative height anomalies here on the west coast, which means you're going to have storm systems and you're going to have uh, flow moving over the plains. Some positive height anomalies start trying to appear on the west uh, toward the latter part of the month, but you can see, I mean, it's just continuing. There's still, I like that shape. It's not a big ridge like this showing up. It's just more of a gradual trough, maybe even slightly weaker flow, but. The euro is continuing to show what I believe is a pretty favorable pattern in the upper air. And if you look at the weeklies, you look at the precipitation, this is where it's expecting rain to fall. This could be severe weather. Most likely this time of year with these ty this type of flow, it would mean uh, severe weather. You can see positive and precipitation anomalies all the way into mid-May. Late May, it just continues. You have continued positive uh Precip anomalies across the plane scattered a little bit weaker signal, but it's still there throughout May on the euro. So let's take a look at the American version of that, American version of the CFS, right? 
Um, let's actually go back. A, let's go back a run here too. Eh, well, well, we'll run with that. We'll run with that. Uh, let's go. Let's look at this. This is the CFS. I like tropical tidbits how they do it because it is the last 48 forecast. It averages it out. So this is kind of an ensemble of weekly models uh, in this suite. So let's take a look at it. Um, 500 millibar height anomaly showing a lot of the same thing here, right? Exact same thing into the first week of May, last week, April, first week of May, big trough, continues that troughing into May and just continues that look, general Southwest flow the whole way through, right? Let's take a look at the precip anomaly really quick. Um, you can see it's doing, let's, let's, you got a nice preview there. Pre, positive precip anomalies all the way on the plains throughout May. I'm telling you, this is looking, uh, it's going to get busy. It's going to be a busier uh, May for sure. I think so. I, I like looking at this. This is uh, analogs. I, I love the uh, for, uh, current sea surface temperature analysis, just the analogs for it, because that kind of gives you an idea about what might be, where we might be. We've been hitting at 2010, 1973, 1998. Those three have been on these throughout most of the spring last few months. Uh, to 2010 looks pretty good. And then if you look at, you know, if you're looking ahead, um, it, it still continues 2010, even 2011, you see some pretty interesting years start popping up there 1999, 2007. So all those were big tornado years as well. So you, everything you see in terms of analogs uh, at this point is kind of pointing in the same direction as well still. So we're still looking at the same thing. This is all looking the same. Uh, I just wanted to show you this. This is a very quick briefing. I didn't want this to take long, uh, but I just want you to know that uh, we haven't been chasing a lot this year because we're we are the pickier storm chasers, a bit more storm stops, and we also well we all have jobs. We have limited uh, area we can chase in time, all that. But our area, the traditional plains, looking like they're going to fire up. We're going to have a lot of live storm chasing coming up. We have our workshop guest out late part of the month. It's going to be a really interesting month, long month, I think. Lots of storm chasing, and I'm uh, excited, but I also want people to be ready for this because uh, it's been a while since we've had a really big May over the plains, right? It's been since at least 2019 since we've had something that was a little busier. So this is going to be uh, probably a pretty busy period we're coming up on. I will probably, uh, I'll try to do some more of these as we move forward, but for now, the early indications are the middle of the country, and I'm talking broad area. Uh, from Canada to Mexico, uh, all the states you would encompass the traditional tornado alley. There's going to be tornadoes there. It's not breaking to say breaking news to say that's going to be happening in May. I think the big breaking news is is that it looks like there's a favorable pattern through much of the month, and that's not as typical. So we'll see. Uh, I'm looking forward to it. If you are wanting to follow us along this year, be sure to subscribe if you haven't done so. And we will see you out there. And well, we'll see you next time.